All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Filipino martial arts. Um, I know it gets a little tedious as we bow in and bow out, but it only takes a moment, and I just like to do it. Um, it's just a re nice, respectful thing to do. So Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and Dog Brothers, Japanese. All right. Um, so let's grab a single stick. And we're, we're going to kind of jam on what we've been working on for a while now. Um, so start with this on your right shoulder. Start with your weight in front. And dropping this back, generating as much power as possible. And um, starting with the weight in front and ending with it in the rear. That's Dog Brothers Power Shot 1. This is the act, I mean, quite literally, these first four power shots are the first four pieces of Dog Brothers curriculum that were ever created. Okay, so that's Power Shot 1. Put it on your left shoulder. Start with your weight in the back. Drop your weight to the front. Okay, so this... I'm only going to take a moment for this. For the forehand angles, it's from the side here, starting heavy in the front, light in the rear, and then ending in the opposite. And switching back every rep. For power shot two, starting heavy in the rear, super light in the front, and then changing that, okay? So that, I was saying in the kids' class, we'll finish all four very quickly here, and I'll give you some other things. It, it's almost a little anticlimactic. You learn a numbering system, and maybe you remember all 12 angles, and then when we get into Dog Brothers, it's you're trying to perfect, I don't really like that word, but I don't have a better one right now. Um, you're trying to perfect a single shot at a time. And the goal here is to hit as hard as possible with every rep with as little effort as possible. And it's that weight transfer. That's all, that's, I should, I was almost said that's almost, that is more important than the angle, that, that rotation, okay? Power shot three has the same mechanics as one, but it's the high horizontal. So um, I'm trying to hit the person in their left temple and knock them out, okay? This is angle one in Pekiti Tercia, even though they don't really think about it as angle one, um, they think of it as the first abecedario, okay? Um, this is also the first angle in Applied Eskrima Balintawak, which we're gonna talk about a little bit tonight because I haven't really covered Balintawak at all. So if that's three, Dog Brothers Power Shot four, has the same attributes as two. My weight starts in the back. I'm super light on my lead foot. And then I'm dropping my weight to the front. It's this high power backhand to the right temple if I'm in my right hand, okay? So everybody, even if you're working your complimentary side, and I think that's awesome, we're gonna do everything together. So let me put everybody in a right lead holding the stick in their right hand. Put it on your right shoulder, start with your weight in the front. Power shot one, go. Power shot two, go. Power shot three, go. Power shot four, go. Now I'm just gonna call the number, okay? One, two, three, and four. One more set, one, two, three, and four. 
put the stick in your other hand, change leads. Make sure your right hand is up. Start with it on your left shoulder. I'm checking my environment because I have worse range awareness in my complementary side. I don't want to hit anything. My wife's right there. Um, <laughs> okay, so weights in front, drop it back. One, drop it forward. Two, drop it back. Three, drop it forward. Four, okay, one and two. And I, I don't think on my two, I modeled this very well. Keep the power high. One, two, three, and four. One more set. One, two, three, and four. Nice job. Okay, relax. Excellent. Um, the Like I said, the distribution and redistribution of body weight is the most important part of that technique. Um, I will say this very quickly, for the past year and change, um, because I can't help myself, I've been studying um, Balintwak Quintata, which is Grandmaster Bobby Tabwata's progression, even though I already have another Balintawak instructorship under Master Virgil Cavada. What, the reason I'm sharing, I'm not, I'm just sharing facts with you. In Quintata, the rotation is everything, everything. The first two levels, there's seven levels of curriculum. The first two levels can be done completely on your own. And it's all about power generation through rotation and weight distribution and body mechanics. And um, there are a lot of good things about the other Balintawak uh, progression that I already had an instructorship in. But honestly, when I started in Quintata, the first four months were really challenging for me because it was making me focus on some things in a Filipino martial arts context that I hadn't really thought about in a long time. So, um, you know I'm recording this and I'm, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. I have no problem saying this publicly because it's going out publicly. Um, I love every system that I teach. I love every system that I train. All of the systems, though, could learn something from one another. So Dog Brothers, which is a super, I, I hope you understand how important Dog Brothers martial arts is to Brian Stoops as a professional martial arts instructor. Like Dog Brothers is one of my first systems that made me actually say, oh, I'm kind of good at this. And like, that's not a statement of ego. It's so important to me, okay? And I, again, I'm recording this. This is gonna go on YouTube later. Anybody could watch it. And I really mean that. Where Dog Brothers could benefit from a little cross-pollination is refining some of the finer points. Dog Brothers, when it comes to like raw power, forget about it. Like it's right up there with Pekiti Tercia. It's, it's a nightmare. Where could you take that though? And where could you even tweak it a little bit more to make it even more deadly. Again, refine some of the some of the minute details. And that's where you could take your dog brothers game like expon to exponentially higher levels. Okay? So this that being said, let's now get into the Lameco material that we've been working and I'm going to go faster because I want to get into some new stuff. And even though he's not here, um, Rodney Kenyette sent me a really good clip of Punanguru Edgar, and it's, it's, uh, it's tape number two. And I know that because 
I know every second of tape number one. Um, and the material he was showing me comes off tape number two. And I actually, again, I'm not a Lameco instructor, but I fought with that material enough. I'm going to show you some things that, that Rodney was pointing out. And it's for everybody's benefit. So this is going to be really cool. Okay. So um, Lameco 3A, Dog Brothers timing. Jab, everybody jab with no footwork. Step back and cut that frondo, forehand redondo, right? And that's it. Come back again, you're in a right lead. Lameco 3B, Lameco timing, jab with no footwork. As you step back, cut that redondo, right? Three, the A version is always the forehand, the B version is always the backhand. And even that changed. It used to be that this was Lameco 3, this was Lameco 4, and later 3A, 3B, 5A, 5B. But it's, it's, it's all good because we're still going to learn it. If you do it with Dog Brothers timing, on this jab, step into this, back into this Illustrissimo cross step, you got it. Cut that frondo with no footwork, okay? So it's only the difference, everybody, do I... If I'm doing my stepping back on the redondo, it's Lameco timing. If I'm doing Illustrissimo cross step on the jab and then no footwork on the redondo, it's Dog Brothers timing. That's it. That's the only difference. So 3B, Lameco timing. Jab and no footwork, step straight back. Hit this redondo versus Dog Brothers timing. Illustrissimo cross step on the jab and then cut that brondo. Now 5A and 5B are, ex what's so cool about this, they're exactly the same. We're just gonna add a follow-up shot. So uh, let's go Lameco timing, 5A. Jab, redondo as you step back, step in and hit that power shot. 5B is the same thing, just on the other side. We'll do Lameco timing. Okay, so jab with no footwork. Hit that Brondo as you step back. Come into your follow-up, and then you can let that either go all the way through, or I, I see some of you expressing it going back to your shoulder chamber. That's awesome. That's great. The only, just on the backhand side, don't, unless you're faking or you're like drawing, this is my concern. Don't do this, right? You can do this if you're, if you're, you're doing it on purpose because you're faking. You want the person to think you have bad structure. And then if they bite, you're going to hit them. But um, that's more of a sparring slash fighting thing. For here, like in actuality, you would probably do this and then maybe go back into your clock or go back, you know, go back into some kind of snaky stick structure as we've been working it, all right? So it's not as natural from the backhand side because we're so used to ending in this position, right? We know how to fight out of this backhand chamber position. Whereas the opposite, that's not necessarily true. Okay, so um, 5A with Dog Brothers timing. We illustrissimo cross step as we jab. We redondo with no footwork, and then we always step back in for the follow-up. So it's not that much to keep track of. 5B with uh, Dog Brothers timing. Here's my illustrissimo cross step with that jab. There's my brondo. Here's my follow-up, and then I'm ready to come back to something else, okay? Um, 7A with no footwork. Jab, double redondo, follow-up. 7B with no footwork. Jab, double redondo, follow-up. 9A with no footwork. Jab, single redondo, double follow-up. 9B, jab, single redondo, Double follow-up.
And it's only the difference, do you want to do your footwork on the second beat, in which case it's Lameco timing, or do you want to do your footwork on the first beat, on the jab, in which case um, it's what I call Dog Brothers timing, okay? And for the record, <laughs> all of you who are taking the class right now and everybody who's going to watch on the internet, Lameco timing versus Dog Brothers timing, those are some nicknames that I gave this curriculum. If you say that to somebody outside of my organization, they're not going to know what you're talking about. Because remember, again, in this, which I've worn down to a nub, you must believe me, Poonan Guru Edgar, the footwork is always Ritirata Illustrissimo on the Redonda always with all the combinations. Later, there's private lesson footage. I think he's teaching um, uh, Audrey and Salty Dog or somebody like that. It's very, very, very close, unfortunately, to his passing. Like it's only a few months before his passing. He's teaching Illustrissimo cross step on the first beat with all the combinations. And again, um, un, uh, very much unfortunately, Poonan Guru Edgar is not around to answer questions. Did he change it? Was he sick that day and he was just making a mistake? Did he, was that a fighter modification for that, that person in that particular private lesson? We were never going to know. And because I, because this material is so essential to my single stick fight game, I teach both. And because it's not that much to ask of people. You have one version of everything where you step back on the second beat. And then you have one version of everything where you step back on the first beat. That's, that's the only difference. Okay. Um, and then, like I said last week, and then I'm going to move on. If you just memorize the steps, there's only four combinations. Because what you do on one side for the A version, you do on the B side for the B version. Lameco 3 is always jab to redonda. Jab to redonda. 5B is always jab to redondo to a single follow-up. Jab to a redondo to a single follow-up. 7 is always jab to a double redondo to one follow-up. Jab to a double redondo to one follow-up. Nine is always jab, single redondo, double follow-up. Jab, single redondo, double follow-up. All right, so there's only four combinations to memorize. You just memorize them on both sides, the A version and the B version. And then once you have a grasp on that, the only other thing to differentiate, do I step back second beat or do I step back on the first beat? That's it. And um, if you work all those variables, seriously, heavy bag in the air, both hands, I mean, you play with like your bilateralism, that will pay dividends in your sparring and in your fighting. And um, down the line, we can, we can talk about some applications for this as well. Okay. Um, where, I, where I wanted to go was, um, again, Rodney sent me some YouTube uh, clips of Punanguru Edgar, and I thought this was all really interesting stuff. So um, the first thing was, if you, if you have a kickboxing or particularly a JKD background, this is going to pay off. Um, I believe he was calling it the Caballero footwork, which was to me, it just looked like a slide step. That's the way it looked to me. So if you slide your lead foot and step your rear foot, just play with that for a second. Don't even worry about your stick, just get in a lead and slide the lead and step the rear. Just play with that for just a moment so that feels comfortable, right? So you can put your stick neutral if you want and experiment with that, or you can just hold your stick and 
just experiment with that. Okay, slide step. Now, what I was seeing was that footwork on the jab. Okay, and two variations, and we'll play with this for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna get into some other material here. But this, this continues what we've been doing with La Meca, okay? So imagine somebody's moving in on you and you do that footwork to make range and then you have a jab or a broken strike, right? So we get that terminology in a lot of different, like Piquiti Tercia, Dosi Paris, even though, you know, some systems might not, oh, we don't have anything in common with anybody. If, you know, a lot of systems, when you hear broken, you're talking about a strike that does not go all the way through to the other side of the body. Versus a fluid strike, if you do that footwork and then you come all the way through to the other side of the body, play with that as well. So start with your forehand side, slide step into a broken jab, slide step into a fluid jab, right? Or a fluid attack. And then on your backhand side, slide step into a broken strike, one that does not go all the way through, and slide step into a fluid strike, one that goes all the way through, right? Yeah, so it's very simple conceptually, right? No matter what, you're doing that footwork that I just showed you to make range, slide step, slide step retreat, right? Then the only question on both sides, forehand and backhand, you can have a broken strike, so it does not go through to the other side, or you can have a fluid strike where as you do that escaping slide step, it goes all the way through. Just play with those super fast in the air, right? So a slide step retreat to a broken, slide step retreat to a fluid, then try on the other, uh, other side, broken, fluid. And then I'm gonna give you one other concept from Lameco and we're gonna start getting into some other things here. Okay, very nice. So let's focus for the, for the rest of this segment, which again, um, I know he's not here tonight, but I, let me, let me restart and, and actually express something here. If any of you take the time to send me a question, I will do my very best the next time we have class to try to have an answer for you, okay? I, like I'll, I can't guarantee, but I'll do my very best. Like I need, to, I need to research where Split the Kauaian comes from. I should know that, but I don't know the origin of that term. Um, but if you send me, if you take the time to send me a question, I will do my very best to answer it for you. Now, what Rodney sent me was really, this is what I saw in the short clip. We're gonna do the same footwork. It's always gonna be a fluid strike, and then you're gonna respond with a redondo on that new side. So see, if I'm starting on my open side, there's my slide step into a fluid strike, and then I'm going right into that redondo on that backhand side. The opposite would be if I'm, if I'm chambered on my backhand side and I slide step fluid, well, here's my frondo on my new side. So it's only two variables. So you're either going starting open, ending closed and doing the redondo on the closed side, or starting closed, fluid strike to the open, and then expressing that redondo on the open side. So um, let, let me call it 
and we'll we'll all do it together. So everybody, slide start on your open side, your forehand side. Slide step back and hit through, and then redondo on this new side. That's the first variation. All right, and then make sure you have room. Slide step again, hit through, redondo on the new the now the open side. Okay, so those are some variables, however minor this may seem on the Lameco um, combinations. And um, again, staying on the side with a broken jab, that's, you know, Lameco three, five, seven, and nine. That's predominantly what I teach. This the idea of Cavaliero footwork with a fluid attack and then a redondo on your new side, right? So here, um, this was some other footage from Punanguru Edgar that I thought was really good that I, I thought I would share with all of you. Okay, before, because um, I want to spend about the last 10 minutes on some Balintawak basics that you can all work on by yourselves. Okay, um, and I thought before I did that, I would just, I know I've left the frame, I'm coming right back. I thought I would just talk about sticks and um, consideration in sticks. And um, I'm not gonna go on for very, very, very long. Um, different arts typically will work better depending on the practitioner based on a certain kind of stick. Some arts where that I find that to be really true, Balintawak and Dosi Paris. Dosi Paris, there's a lot of abanico type motions and Balintawak, it's a close range, you know, lightning quick, super fast um, kind of a system. So like a thinner, typically like a shorter stick, this is a stick that I, I'll do a lot of my Balintawak Quintata training in, something like that works really well. Um, then I have, and pardon me that this is bent, this ended up, this went to the Philippines with me um, for the Pekiti Tercia convention, and we did some water training and this got a little bowed. But um, before this was bent, this is like just a nice student grade stick. It's definitely, I know it's curved now, but you can see how much longer it is than the Balintawak stick. It's also, it's, it's, what's fair? Maybe a third more dense than the Balintawak stick. All right. Um, and I used to have, I think, 10 or 20 pairs of these um, in my first garage academy in Southern California. Then, um, I'll show you that this is one of my Largo sticks, and this is actually one of the two sticks that, and you can see the, the length differential, even though this is a little bowed now because it's curved, you can see how much extra room the Largo stick, the one on the bottom, has on this. And this Largo stick is maybe... 15% denser than this student grade stick. Now, why do I like these sticks? And again, it's pair is some, it's, it's brother or sisters around here somewhere. These are the sticks that I've done most of my dog brothers fights with. Why do I prefer these? Cause I'm short. I'm a shorter guy. I'm like five, seven and a half. That half is very important. Um, I'm a shorter guy. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Right. And it's, and, and I mean, Ivan, like, it's not a problem as long as you, you know, you train hard and sometimes being a shorter guy has its advantages because uh, no offense to anybody on the class, some of the taller guys sometimes if they don't have intel on the person, they're, oh, it's a short guy, what can they do? And then if you're well trained, um, you know, life is good. So, but I'm not saying anything bad about tall or short. We, we all got to work with the attributes that we have, but <laughs> the reason I was relating, I'm a shorter guy, I really like the advantage that the extra, you know, I think it's three or four inches here gives me, 
as far as the Dog Brothers type environment. Um, then I have some Krabi Krabong sticks, all right? And these were given to me as a gift. And um, you can see, even with my Largo stick, you can see the, the length differential there. And um, the Krabi sticks are maybe 25% denser than my Largo stick. And these Largo sticks are pretty dense, okay? Um, and if you know anything about, well, I'll probably talk about Krabi Krabong as it relates to Dog Brothers starting next week. Um, but what we think of as a Puno, they, it would be incredibly long. In fact, you know what? Here, I have, um, I have these trainers, these dog trainers from Thailand. Um, my mother actually went, when she was in Thailand, bought these for me. And I, I'm sad to say that's the second member of my family who is not a certified Thai boxing instructor who's been to Thailand, and I have not. I would like to change that. But you can see, yeah, uh, exactly. You can see the, how long. Now, the Thais wouldn't call it a puño, but that would be our puño if we're using Filipino martial arts terminology. And the Krabi people have this really deceptive way when they strike, visually it's hard for a moment to differentiate the tip from the puño. Now, not so much with this, because this is silver and this is painted red, but when you're using that, concept with a stick and you have a lot of puño it can be really hard to tell what's what okay and then lastly and i made a short video a few weeks ago um i have these monsters and i have two of these and these were also given to me as a gift and it's i would never fight with these and i would never take a fight with these these are really more for training. These are really more for Carenza work. And these are really more for, you know, you do any of your standard training using this or both of them, and then you get your fighting sticks in your hand and your fighting sticks, even if they're Largo sticks like this, they feel like a toothpick. And that's kind of what you want. So um, I don't... I don't want to spend your money for you, but I, I am happy. I hope you don't feel like I, I am not an employee and I'm not a sponsor um, or anything like that. He's just a very good friend of mine. Um, in, in the chat, it says Combat Instruments, and that's the company that's uh, Tuhan Nick Papidakis in Dog Brothers. He's Pappy Dog. And he made like all of the, I think, except for the little, the little Balintawak scorpion stick that I showed you here that I acquired elsewhere, um, Tuhan Nick made all of those sticks. And it's either, I think it's bloodsport.com is his URL. If you just search combat instruments, you can find the website really easily. But I, again, I ne would never want to presume to spend your money for you. But having, and I've, you know, acquired these over the last, like, 17 years, having all this gear on hand to train with is just really nice. Because, I, you know, different sticks for different days, depending on how you're feeling. And um, so, speaking of which, let's grab a single stick. Let's go over some Balintawak basics before we run out of time here. and. Um, so we're going to jump right to lesson B in module one. There's 10 modules. Right now we're in Applied Eskrima Balintawak. That's the system created by Master Virgil Cavada, who was a senior student under uh, Grandmaster Attilia. Okay. So for this, I want you to take your live hand and literally put it up against the stick so it's bracing right behind it. Now get in a right lead facing the camera or the screen. Can you rotate from side to side? Do your best to rotate 
like a full 180 degrees or as close as you can. Great. Can you squat and rotate? Squat down a little bit and rotate. Try to maintain that 180 or as close as you can. Okay, without bumping into the screen, can you change your lead by stepping forward? So you're in a left lead now and you just step forward. You can still rotate. You can still squat and rotate. Okay. And now change your lead back by retreating back into a right lead. Okay. So I'm, I, I ate up a lot of our time, but it was important. It's an important point. I'm going a little fast. Um, that is at least initially enough for lesson B stances. This is your standard Balinta walk defense in this system. Um, sometimes people have questions about the validity of this. We'll talk about it. Just trust me and kind of learn what I'm asking you to learn. And then as the ne next few weeks go by, you know, we can dialogue about this. Okay, lesson C, the 12 strikes. Uh-oh, so I'm gonna teach you another 12 angle numbering system. But the good news, this is pretty similar to a scream of one. So angle one, forehand horizontal high. Angle two, backhand horizontal high. Angle three, forehand horizontal midline. Angle four, backhand horizontal midline. Okay, angle five, palm down live hand, grab the stick, thrust. Okay, angle six, bring the stick up to your backhand side. Take your live hand over your right arm, grab the inside of the stick, here's my thrust, okay? So from the side, here's, uh, the stick is on the backhand side, my left hand goes in, so my palms are facing each other for a moment, grabs here, and there's my bayonet action for angle six, okay? So let's review everything we've had so far. Horizontal high, horizontal high, Midline horizontal, midline horizontal. Navel thrust, okay. Backhand collarbone or chest thrust, six. Seven, forehand collarbone or chest thrust. Okay, now four diagonals. Eight, diagonal down. Nine, diagonal down. 10, diagonal up. 11, diagonal up. And then 12, a backhand redondo, hit your defense for one second, and then back to posture, okay? So four horizontals, one, two, three, four. Three thrusts, five, six, seven, four diagonals, eight, nine, 10, 11, and one backhand redondo. Hit your defense for a second and back to posture. Beautiful. You, everybody looks great. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then done. All right. The last two drills, um, I'm gonna go over them very quickly conceptually and you'll, I will upload the recording as soon as I can and you can have all week to work on them. Lesson D, the 12 strikes halfway, so broken to defense. So everybody just follow along with me. One, it doesn't go all the way through, defense. Two, it doesn't go all the way through, defense. Three, Four, five doesn't, that line doesn't really change on any version, okay? Six, you just kind of stick it out there and drop in. Seven, same thing. Eight, nine, 10, and then just kind of come into this. 11, and then 12 starts to go out and then you just drop back. Beautiful. And then the final thing that we're going to do this evening, um, stances B, 12 strikes, uh, C, D. This is lesson E, right? A, we're skipping A, B, C, D. Yeah, this is E. 
the 12 strikes all the way through to defense. So just follow me. One, two, three, four. No change with five because it's already expressing itself. Okay, six, downward diagonal. Yep, beautiful. Seven, downward diagonal. Nice. Eight goes all the way through. Nine goes all the way through. Ten is a little awkward. You hit it and then just kind of drop into it. Eleven. And then twelve is the way that we learned it. There you go. Okay? So um, lesson B, without me going too much, because I'm already a few minutes over. You have your block. You have your rotation. You can squat and rotate. You can change your lead by advancing, rotating, squatting, and rotating. You can change your lead by retreating, rotating, squatting, and rotating. That is the literally, that's as much as you need to know, or really about all there is to know for lesson B, stances. Lesson C, the, the 12 strikes. One, two, three, four, I'm going fast. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Lesson D, the 12 strikes halfway to defense. I'm not going to do all 12. One, you do them as broken strikes. So they don't go all the way through. Five, there's really nothing to know. Just remember six and seven is really the only place where things change. For this version, you just kind of stick the angle out there and drop into defense. Then lesson E, the 12 strikes all the way through. So now they're fluid. Two, three, four, no change, five. Six rips in and downward diagonal. Seven in and downward diagonal. And then the rest of them, it's just kind of common sense, right? 12 is the way that we learned it, okay? So those are some things you can start to work on by yourselves at home before class next week. Um, I'm not going to type it again. Um, I, I'm just trying to get this URL in every class that I upload to my channel. Again, it's stoops, O-M-A-L-C.com. Um, I'm going to say it again. There's no pressure for anybody here. If you don't want to go beyond the complimentary public classes, no worries. There is a video on my YouTube channel about affiliate marketing. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's not spamming. Um, if you work in any kind of an industry where you have a large social media following or you have a big email list, um, it's basically putting that URL in front of more people in exchange for an affiliate commission. So if you're interested, just look at my YouTube channel. There's no investment. Like I say, it's not a pyramid scheme, um, but there's a video there that explains everything. All right, commercial part of our broadcast is over. Thank you very much everybody for joining me. Um, as per usual, um, I'm very grateful that you would you know, get, share your time with me to take the class. It's really, really nice. Let's bow the class out. Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and dog brothers, Japanese. All right. Um, I'm a little behind. I'm sorry about that. It's been a bit of a crazy week. So I will, I'll actually upload all of the class videos from this week, this evening. I haven't done Monday, Monday's classes yet, but they'll be on YouTube um, before the evening is out. Okay, thanks everybody.